Okay, today we're going to look at going from Photoshop or Illustrator into After Effects and um, in this tutorial we're just going to look at how you get all your content from those programs set up uh, in After Effects ready to animate. So we'll look at what sort of formats you'll need to think about for the project, uh, things to do with layers, so in After Effects layers are, are, um, you can have lots of layers so it's important to order them. Um, transferring stuff from Illustrator to Photoshop, um, all the different After Effects import options that you have, um, just a, an introduction to the After Effects workspace, thinking about what compositions are and effects controls. So, um, yeah, there's quite a lot to get through. So, if you look at my Illustrator file, so here we've got some artwork that we've made using Illustrator, and you'll notice that just around here we've got some green lines and some sort of guides, um, etc. Now this is a, a document set up for HDTV. So these lines here show you where title safe content can go, which is this inside line. So any titles that appear outside of that sometimes are clipped. So they're just guides to show you where stuff can go if this was on a TV. And we're working in HDTV because this is quite important you work to the biggest format you can first and then if you need to put something on mobile or tablet you scale down. So you'll find with print images if you take them off the web they don't scale up. Similarly with um, images that you're going to use for um, HDTV if you develop for mobile and then try and scale up you get um, pixelation and, and graininess. So what we're looking at is to work big and then you can scale down quite easily and you don't lose any definition. So to create a document like this, it's just in the, um, the new document uh, dialog box. So if you just go into new here, and you'll see there's a profile option and there's video and film. So these are fairly new options since CS6, I think. And we're working on HDTV um, 1080. And when that comes in, you'll see it's 1920 by 1080. So that's the aspect ratio, 1920 pixels wide by 1080 high. Um, and that's full HD. So that's what I have here. Okay. Um, and then all these bits are made using the tools in Illustrator that you know, know about by now. Um, just looking at the layers palette here. Now, one thing you'll have to bear in mind if you're working with Illustrator with a view to putting it in After Effects is that we need different layers with different content. So if you're just drawing in Illustrator, it'll do lots of objects on one layer. One of the kind of unfortunate things is that we actually need one object per layer for After Effects. So if you look in here, um, you'll see that I've got one layer, and each layer has a different object on it. And I've got them all labeled um, to say what they are, so background, main, mid, small, which is this, and then the windows left and right. Now to get from Illustrator to Photoshop, because they're all independent layers as well, it makes it a lot easier. You can just go File and then Export, and you'll see, give it a name, location, PSD, I'll just call this Tutorial 1, and then Export. And this dialog comes up quite important. It'll default to flat image, but you want to write the layers and have maximum editability. So what that means is obviously the layers get transferred, but also the maximum editability means that if you've got any type in there, you can transfer it later. And then you just click OK and it will export to Photoshop. So if we just jump over to Photoshop, you see I have the, the graphic in Photoshop. And the layers are all transferred as they were in Illustrator and the aspect ratio and everything. So that's ready to go now into After Effects. Now you can import into After Effects from Illustrator, but if you haven't done the layers and put objects on different layers, it becomes a bit of a problem um, because it, it doesn't order them properly. And also sometimes the graphics don't transfer into um, After Effects as well as they might in Photoshop. So it's kind of not that it's a preferred format for Photoshop, but it just makes life easier. So once we've got our graphic ready and all labeled up, we can go into uh, After Effects. And here you can see I've imported it. 
So um, this is what we'll work on later. Um, but if you just open up After Effects and then go New Project, you'll have this sort of look. And just to explain the area, um, so this is the area where the this will be your canvas. This bar down here is your timeline. This area on the left here that's highlighted is your project bin. And this area over here is where all your palettes live. So it's very similar to all the other Adobe um, software packages. So if we just go into the import option here and we want to import a file, and just navigate to the tutorial layered Photoshop document that we have. So here. Now, lots of people just click open, but it's important at the stage to look what you're importing. So here it says all acceptable files. You can leave that as a default. Import as footage. You want to click on there and go down to the bottom option, composition, retainers, layer, size. So if you import by accident as footage, it will compress all your layers into one, which is not what we want because then we can't make them move independently, obviously. And the retain layer size option means that the transform controls around each layer item will be the size of that thing. So the circles will have tight bounding boxes. If you just do composition, the bounding box will be the size of the document, which gets a bit awkward. So retain layer sizes, click open. Editable layer styles, yes, click OK. It'll then import, and you'll see your project bin here is populated with two things. There's a colored little square. This is what we call the composition. So if we double click that, it'll open up the canvas with content and you'll see it will populate the timeline. So what's actually happening here is all your layers are imported in a folder and then the timeline itself is called a composition which is then made in the project. So you can have multiple compositions in one timeline. So here we just double click the um, composition and we can see that we've got all our layers in here. So here you can see at the bottom where the um, layers are, it's important to label things because the thumbnails in, in After Effects are so small that you can't actually make sense of what they are just by looking at them. So really good naming conventions for your layers, de describing what they are is important because that's the only way that you can actually see on the timeline um, what they are. So in terms of formats, we'd like you to, for the After Effects file, work in HD and then um, we'll work from that. Obviously the layers, importance of ordering and naming. Um, with the transferring from Illustrator to Photoshop, as long as you have every, every single object on a new layer named and then export to Photoshop, that will work um, and it will transfer exactly as it is in, in Illustrator. With the After Effects import options, don't forget import layers um, and retain the um, the layer size. The After Effects workspace, very quickly, the canvas in the middle, timeline at the bottom, and the bin on the left with the palettes. Uh, composition, so when the layers come in, they'll make a new composition. Later on, you'll find out that you can nest uh, compositions, so you can work with multiple timelines um, in them. And then what we'll do in the next tutorial is look at the effects control, but just to quickly give you a peek. So each layer has a, an effects control so if we look at this option here, so this is my main um, shape. If I just go to the layer there and twiddle down, you see there's some downward arrows. And you'll see I have some it's what we call effects controls. So there are options for anchor point, position, scale. So we can now use these and put in keyframes to animate with, which we'll do in the next tutorial. So all the effects controls are hidden underneath each layer. So if you look to the left of the layer name, there's a little arrow. As soon as you click on that, you'll see transform, click on the downward arrow, and there you have the effects controls, which we'll work with in the next tutorial.